Hello everyone, I'm Phil, technical director at Argentum Studio. Today we would like to tell you about a new tool from Epic Games, MetaHuman Groom for Goudini. In our studio we love hair grooming, so we immediately went to check out what it is. MetaHuman Groom can now be seen as full-fledged grooming solution, standing alongside industry standards like Honornatrix, XGen and Yeti. This plugin is called MetaHuman for Goudini, but it is important to understand that you can create hairstyles for any character, not necessarily a MetaHuman. I would like to thank the main author of this guide, Artem Erikenov, our senior grooming artist. Let's begin by adding a geometry node. This is where we'll be doing all of our work. I'm currently working in Goudini version 20.5 and the plugin supports version 20.0 and above. When you open the tab menu, you will notice a separate section for grooming metahumans. These tools are labeled MH Groom. We won't go through all of them. Instead, we will focus on just two or three to get a clear understanding of the core principles. First, we will create the MH Groom head. Let's take a closer look. I will enable the wireframe view so we can better understand the geometry. This node has several outputs, full geometry, the head without the eyes, the scalp, the face, etc. It also includes VDBs, both the full and the enough without the ears. I will create a null and connect the output I need. Right in this node, you can increase the subdivision level to get more precision when working with attribute maps or when painting. You can also control the subdivision level for each part of the head separately. In my case, the default settings are just fine. I will rename my null for the sake of the workflow. Ok, for the next step, we will paint a density mask, just like we usually do in Goudini. This mask defines the area where we want the groom to appear. I'm using symmetry and for the attribute name I type the density manually. For the brush shape, I switch from volume to surface. This helps avoid tricky areas like around the ears. I will keep the mask simple for now. Here on the forehead, I am using the refined brush to soften some transitions. Ok, this looks good to me. Now let's move on to something more interesting. We will show you how to create braids. And yes, this will be done procedurally. All we need is a set of curves that will guide the braid direction across the scalp. Let's create a draw curve node. The first input goes to the base geometry. This is the surface we will be drawing on. By the way, you can make the geometry visible by holding CTRL and clicking the selectable template icon next to the node. In the Draw Curve node, set the projection geometry to the surface you want to draw on. We can also disable Guide Geometry so it doesn't highlight and distract us while drawing. Now we are ready to paint the curves that will define the flow and placement of our braids. You can draw any shape you like. I will speed up the process here just to give you an example. Once we have created a few curves, we can use the mirror node to copy them to the other side of the head. In settings, I will set reverse to no change, so the curve direction stays consistent. To make the curves smoother, you can use nodes like resample and smooth to adjust their flow. In the resample node, I will set the length parameter to something around 0.004 and enable subdivision curves. This gives us better interpolation and a more natural shape. With the next step, we will offset our course from the surface using the guide collide with VDB node. The first input is for our curves, the second is for the geometry and the third is the VDB from our main source. Using the surface offset and push amount parameters, we can lift the curve slightly off the surface. This node works in a way that keeps the root of each guide fixed to the surface, which is exactly what we want. Now we have curves that are ready for braid generation and further clumping along the surface. To make braids, we can use the MH Braid node. Connect the curves into the first input and the skin geometry into the second. To make things easier to read, let's switch the visualization method to tubes. This node gives us a lot of control over the final look. In the shape tab, we can adjust the profile width and height of the cross section. Using the graph, I am able to control size multiplier along the curve's length, which is really handy. Keep in mind, width and height define the braid profile only along the curve. If you want to control the thickness parameter, it can be found in the Strain tab, with its own graph control as well. 
In the frequency tab, we can adjust the braid repetition and the resolution of a generated geometry. Here you can also find the twist settings. I'm demonstrating how easily you can create different styles and variations. Next is a very important toggle we will definitely want to enable, root guide. It attaches the braid roots to the skin geometry. If we enable expand roots, you will notice that they have set slightly and remain touching the skin on the forehead. I will adjust the graph slightly for better placement. Now we can convert the braids into hair strands using the MH Groom Guide Feel Node. It uses the same two inputs, curves and skin. Once enabled, you will see groomable hair strands. I will increase the total count and tweak the guide resolution for more detail. If you want to enable hair shading, go back to the object level and set the display mode to shade open curves. I will also add a bit of color for better visualization. As a result, we get all the geometry filled with hair strands. Besides the plugin tools, we can also introduce default Goudini nodes to add additional variation. For example, the freeze node adds random noise. I will set a curve mask to have a better control over the length of the strands. With the operation set to freeze, we can tweak the noise parameters to our liking. Before the next step, don't forget to save your project. I will decrease the thickness of the strands back in the MH Guide node and increase the total strain count. Be mindful of the number of strains you generate from your specific example, because the final Alembic file can quickly become very large. Furthermore, keep in mind that UE5 only accepts strains with a maximum of 255 points per strain. To better examine your groom, you can use the MH Groom Doctor node. As an example, I will select a single braid and plug this selection in. In the Info tab, we can now see all the warnings. Right now, we don't really care about this, because at the end of this workflow, I will show you how to manage the overall point count. However, in some cases, you will need to be precise in how you manage each part of the groom separately across the head. Ok, let's finish setting up the braid and continue by adding corner row clumps using the MH Groom Corner node. As an input, we can use the same course to guide the strains. First, I will use the push amount in the guide tab under the skin section. This brings the strains onto the surface. Second, let's increase the overall density, or use the face total count parameter to fill out the whole head the strains. As an additional option, you can adjust the density distance parameter to control the spacing. For this specific part on the sides, we can eliminate the stretched out areas with additional mask. We already have one created earlier in the flow. In the density method, choose custom mask attribute and enable the toggle use density mask. From the drop down menu, select the existing attribute. In this particular example, I will use a duplicate of the mask, since I couldn't figure out why the original isn't working properly at the moment. If you have any ideas about this, I would appreciate your feedback. For a test example, this works fine. Now our corner clumps are matching our braids seamlessly. As another option, you can enable density nodes. Though I don't find it useful in my particular case. Back in the guide tab, we have a very important slider for adjusting the number of points per strain. This helps define the strain resolution. With the tip of set and tip render parameters, we can shift the roots along the curve, breaking visual repetition and adding more randomness. Using tip project to skin, we can flatten or cool the tips to create a natural bulge. Also, in the skin distance section, there is a graph to help control the steepness of the transition. I won't go into all the details of this node, feel free to experiment on your own to develop your own style. Before moving on, I will adjust the strain thickness in the attribute and appearance tab. I will set the same values as I used for the braids.
Now let's merge everything together to get a quick preview of the overall look. Let's continue and add some clumping. In my case, I will use the default Goudini node. I will decrease the clump size to better see the effect. As with other tools, I will adjust the clump profile graph. We also have the option to add curling. Make sure to leave the tips untouched in the graph. Next, we can add subclumps by duplicating the node and using a different shape method. I will choose linear blend, which creates a nice separation between large and small clumps. Don't forget to disable curling for this second copy. I will set the blend parameter to roughly one third. Moving forward, we can introduce some additional variation using freeze noise, just like we did earlier, adjusting its parameters as needed. While making these changes, make sure the groom collides with the head geometry. We can simply copy our previous collide node for this purpose. Again, don't forget to save your project. As the final touch in this stage, I will decrease the overall resolution and density of the groom and slightly adjust the thickness for a more polished look. Let's see what we already have. We can notice that our braids are starting too far on the forehead, so we need to adjust the clump mask. I have got a small viewport bug here, so I will reload it, and now the mask appears correctly. I will make it a bit broader in this area. Alternatively, we could simply move the guide curves higher. Let's check it again. And for the draft test, I am satisfied with the look. We can continue further. Since we haven't yet optimized for point count, we definitely need to reduce it for better performance. The resample node will serve well for this case. I will set the length value to around 0.0035, which should be enough. Looking at the forehead, we can see that there is a still noticeable transition, which we can fix in a moment. Go to the thickness parameter for the braids and type in the values manually for the root. Now we are ready to export our groom. Image groom export accepts strands as the first input, guides as the second and skin as the third. Since we were using draw curve node and node guides, I will leave the second input empty. Connecting the skin will be enough. In the export node, we can define groups if we want to. For example, clubs and braids separately, or hair and eyelashes, etc. I will demonstrate how to split the head into two parts, left and right. Using a group node and activating keep and bounding regions, I will select the strains I want with a bounding box and set the name to right. I will repeat the same procedure for the left side. In the export node, set the selections and naming accordingly. To add another group, just hit the plus button. As additional attributes, we can output color, roughness, clump ID and others. Before hitting export, I will set the transform and scale to match the Unreal Engine coordinate system. In this case, set it the same way I do, and it should work properly. Name the file as you wish and add .abc at the end. Hit accept and save to disk. And that's it, we are done here. Let's jump into Unreal Engine and set everything up to create a custom groom for MetaHuman character. I will show you an example using the new built-in MetaHuman tool in Unreal Engine 5.6. You can create this asset right here. I already have one in my content folder. This is the default avatar. Inside I have a custom avatar with the other body type. Right now he has a default hair on his head, and I will show you how to apply our groom. I have created a folder called Hair Tutorial, where we will import all our assets. First we need to enable the groom plugins. Then by simply drag and dropping we can import the assets directly into the content browser. Here we can see that all our attributes have transferred. We don't need to change any transforms since we use the image groom exporter. 
Root UV is the key attribute that makes our groom applicable to any metahuman character. We also have weave and below that the group that we prepared. Click Import All, double click to open it and check the stats. We don't really need to adjust these settings right now. Maybe I'll just change the material to the default metahuman one. The next step is to create binding for this groom. To do this, we need a skeletal mesh. For our groom, any metahuman skeletal mesh will work. Since I don't have any metahumans in this project, I exported our MH groom head as an FBX geometry, and we will use that as our skeletal mesh. This mesh only contains the head geometry without the eyes or mouth. In the import settings, I will enable force all mesh as type and set it to skeletal mesh. As a precaution, I will also enable full precision UVs, though so this isn't absolutely necessary. I will add them to the scene and we can see that our mesh and groom match perfectly. I will rename my assets, then right click on the groom asset and choose create binding. We will select our skeletal mesh as both the target and the source. Click create and the binding is ready. Now, for the final step, just drag and drop our binding into the metahuman character window. By the way, in the hair and clothing tab, we have specific binding groups for hair, eyelashes, eyebrow, moustache, beard and peach fuzz. In our case, of course, we want to use hair. And it's as simple as that. Before dragging, I will rename it as well. You can see that a new asset is created. In the character menu, double click this asset to apply. Keep in mind that the asset needs to be reloaded first. I will click on the neighboring asset to refresh it. As you can see, this groom can be applied to any metahuman character, and it automatically adapts to the head shape. With this workflow, you can create any custom groom you can imagine. And not just for metahuman from Unreal Engine, but for any character from any DCC or engine. Thank you for watching, and a big thanks to Epic Games for continuing to support the community with new tools. We would appreciate it if you could leave a comment under the video, as this will help us understand what content to create in the future. See you next time and take care.